Hashtag Ask Goji Man, can you please make a video on coffee? A great question, let's get to it. Roll the titles. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. Welcome back, it's good to see you all again. If we haven't met before, then hi, I'm Goji Man. I'm currently finishing a master's in nutrition and qualifying as a nutritionist and next year I'll be studying for a PhD in nutritional science. I make vegan health and nutrition videos every single day in which I answer your health questions under the hashtag Ask Goji Man. So if you have a question for me then hashtag Ask Goji Man in the comments below or you can send your video questions through to contacts at gojimannutrition.com and remember to hit that subscribe button and bell notification so you never miss any of my videos. So before I jump into the video, just to let you all know that starting tomorrow, I will be doing a three part series on interpreting test results and what you do when you have this information. Since I asked if you wanted videos on this topic, lots of you have sent comments through, so your wish is my command. So tune in tomorrow for part one of three and on that note, to the question. So the reality of it is that coffee is both incredibly healthy for some and for others it severely hinders their health. So in answering the question of whether coffee is actually healthy for you or not, it's not so straightforward. And ironically, for many on standard Western diets, coffee is actually one of their main sources of antioxidants. Now there are many different studies that show coffee is good for gut permeability, reducing diabetes risk, and even lowering your risk of developing certain types of cancers. Other studies have even showed that it can increase mood and also speed up a person's metabolism. On the other side of the coin, coffee can be extremely addictive. It can interfere with your stress hormone levels, making you feel fatigued and anxious. And for many people, they have a mass over-reliance on coffee in their daily routines. So with this in mind, it can be so difficult for people to know whether coffee is actually good or bad for them. So specifically about coffee, the first thing that I want to say is that the question shouldn't be whether coffee is good or bad for you, but more can your body actually tolerate the coffee? Because ultimately it's our genetics that determine whether a person responds well or not to coffee. For me personally, I could never tolerate coffee. I was always very jittery and wired on it. For others, they can drink coffee throughout the day and have absolutely no problems with it, and it does nothing to impede their energy levels. Now, if you have adrenal issues, fatigue issues, or even thyroid problems, would I say that these type of people should consume coffee? Well, my answer would be no until they have fixed their underlying issues, because ultimately the coffee is probably compounding their health issues. For others, they may have cytochrome P450 enzyme deficiencies, which 10 to 15% of most populations have. This would then make it very difficult to metabolize the coffee correctly, which then could cause a host of sensitivity issues such as anxiety and even palpitations. For these and other people, coffee at higher amounts can also severely impede liver function and detoxification pathways in the body. So if we know that coffee is good for some and bad for others, how do we know which camp we fall into? And the only way you're gonna know this is by listening to your body. A good way of doing this is to taper off of coffee and then remove it from your diet for a period of four to six weeks. Clearly, if your first response to this comment is horror because you need coffee in your life to get through the day, then you probably have a problem. And if you are one of these people that has an over-reliance on coffee, then there is a big chance that you will have adrenal fatigue issues or hormone imbalances. So this is why it's so good to take a break from coffee for a period of four to six weeks to let your batteries recharge. You can still have hot drinks that just replace coffee with herbal teas instead, but it's really important that you come off of coffee for a period of time so you can see how your body responds. Without doing this, you will simply never know. You may think that you have no problem at all whatsoever with coffee, but then you stop drinking it, you feel incredible, and your energy levels can potentially shoot up. So again, just to reiterate, there is no one size fits all approach with coffee. You really have to see whether coffee is helping or hindering with your health goals. If it doesn't work for you, then don't just keep it in your life because of an emotional attachment to it. You will do yourself a mass disservice in the long run. Now, I also quickly want to touch upon the quality of the coffee that you are drinking and how this can add to your overall problem. Many coffee brands found in supermarkets today can be very, very acidic, and this acidity can drive those headaches, energy crashes, and even mood swings. And also, many common coffee brands can also have large amounts of fungus and fungal byproducts called mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are essentially a group of naturally occurring chemicals such as ochratoxins and T2 toxins that are a byproduct of certain molds. 
So when you drink lower quality brands of coffee that contain these toxins, it can get into your body and make you feel extremely jittery and also wired. So this is also something for you to bear in mind. You may actually be okay drinking coffee, but the unwanted symptoms that you are experiencing are simply being derived from the poor quality coffee that you are drinking. So my advice is to find a good quality organic coffee brand and see if you still have problems with coffee. Now I don't personally drink coffee, so I can't really recommend a reliable brand, but whatever brand you do choose, then you want to find out if the manufacturer is testing for these mycotoxins, molds, and even fungus. You also want to ensure that the coffee brand that you choose has a low acidity. Higher acidity coffee brands can create many issues in the body, such as digestive issues, reflux problems, and even gut dysbiosis issues. Now, many health food shops carry brands that are low in acid and free of toxins. They will probably be more expensive, but it will certainly be worth the investment in the long run. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to tune in tomorrow for part one of three of interpreting test results. As always, keep the questions coming. If you have a question for me, then hashtag AskOjaman in the comments below. Alternatively, you can send your video comments and questions through to contact at gojimannutrition.com. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow.